Hey guys, Don here from Novus Tech, and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be doing a small review on Open Auto Pro. So let's get started. Now I'm going to leave a link down in the description below to where you could get this and it's an app called Open Auto. They do have open source version which is not pro and you could actually just download that and use it. Crankshaft is actually based on that and this is the pro version where you actually have to pay $29 to get this operating system which in my mind it's worth every penny. Now we are going to be doing a light review on this that's because I will be doing a full review once I get this all attached to my car with OBD and everything else. So I'm just going to go through the process of what the screen is this time just to so show you guys what this is all about. Now a couple of things before I jump into this. Uh, I did purchase some parts already, namely this one piece. If you're taking a look at it with a huge heatsink, this is a four channel 50 watt amp for $26. And this is what's going to be powering my speakers from the Android Auto. So you guys were wondering how am I going to power it? Uh, this is the guy, $26. Now, another thing is I am going to be using a USB sound card. Uh, that's what it's required to run this Android Auto. You can't use the built in. And as far as FM goes, I will show you that later. But yes, it does support FM. And the last but not least question is, does it support Apple CarPlay? And yes, Open Auto Pro does support CarPlay. So you have Android Auto, CarPlay, phone mirroring, basically FM radio. It's, it's on its own level for a head unit itself. That, that's why I will definitely be switching to this for the car build. Now, one thing I am running into a problem with is this is the trim for my WRX. And... The height of this is actually 99 millimeters, one millimeter shy of this screen. So I do have to do some customization, probably grind down a little bit of the plastic in the back. You won't see it, but I might have to do some customization to this to make it fit because normally double DINs are 100 millimeters. This is the only screen that I found that actually is 100 millimeters. All the other ones I did find were about like 106 or 110 and that does not work. So the screen I am using is called uh, UCT Electronics. Uh, I am going to go through all of this later when I do the build video, but let's jump into this software. Okay, so the first thing about this, uh, it might be very reflective because I still have a film on here. It should look a little bit better once I take the film off. But yes, this is the app itself. Now you do have support for telephone, which you could actually go through contacts and everything. Uh, Android Auto, which I'm not going to select because I don't have my phone hooked up. Auto Box is your CarPlay. So that's another one that you're going to be looking at. Phone mirroring, reverse camera, dashboard. That's where the fun part begins. Dashboard is where you can actually select all the gauges. Now my DPI is a little bit off because I was playing around with the DPI. You can see it's like off the side and everything. Don't mind that. I'm still playing around with the settings. But you do get all the gauges that you want. So if you have the OBD connected, that will work. Um, now if I go back to the same dash, you have music. So if you have Bluetooth, storage, if it's coming from your Android Auto or is it coming from your CarPlay, you could select either or. I could go back. Your equalizer, you could set up your equalizer over here. So I could go to classic, flat rock, whatever I want. So I'm going to go back to flat. Then you have your applications. Now this is where you use your FM radio. So welly.io. If you have an FM tuner, this software will actually allow you to tune your FM right through your stations over here. Now I don't have anything connected for FM, so that's not going to work. But later on, if I do, that's where you're going to get your radio stations. Then you have your volume bar on the bottom, and you can also choose the display settings on the top right just by hitting that with the brightness and also um, uh, the volume meters. Now, I'm gonna also go over to settings, and you can see that you have Android Auto settings, you can change the DPI, the Bluetooth, audio, video. Then you have your audio uh, system over here for your phone notifications, you could change different settings that you want. Uh, system, you could also change. So basically, there's a lot of things that you could go through in this uh, area. Especially like if you're going to an open Android and you want to change how the video looks, you would change the video resolution. And depending on the re video resolution, that's how certain things would look. You also make it 30 frames per second and it's running a little bit too slow. Or run 60 frames and your, your, if your Raspberry Pi could support it. You have your screen DPI. Yeah, this is where you change all these settings. Now, if you have also Bluetooth set up, you can also get it to use wireless Android. So you don't have to plug in your phone. It could be wireless Android Auto. Now, you also have... Uh, volume, reverse cameras, and if you have your phone connected, you could also tether this guy to be a hotspot. Uh, there's a lot of things going for this guy, and that's why I'm going to be choosing this guy to be my main 
heads up unit. If you guys are interested in building the same setup, yes, you could definitely use a crankshaft, but I am going to be using uh, Open Android. Now, if you guys have, if you guys have any other dashboards or any other uh, head unit uh, software that you want me to check on Raspberry Pi, let me know down in the description below because that's something I would want to check out. Anyway, that is it for this head unit. It's actually really fun to play with. It works with the screen just natively. I plugged it up and that's all I really need and it works. Uh, this is an IPS display with 176 degree viewing angle so I could view at any angle and it works perfectly fine. Now if you do want to get CarPlay working there is an additional cost because you have to buy a dongle and also the add-on for it which is $9 or $10 I believe $9.99 and if you want different splash screens for this device you could also purchase that for $4.99 and has all the car manufacturers so instead of booting up Open Auto Pro it will actually boot up your car logo. Now as far as the boot up goes this guy takes are roughly under 30 seconds so it's pretty quick sometimes I might have got like 35 seconds but you're right around 30 seconds on boot up now, I do have a really cool uh, way to boot this guy up that is not used on the form itself and it's new to Raspberry Pi 4 so I'm gonna be showing you guys that when the build video is gonna come out uh, not the one that's coming up but on my soon to be video I will be building this guy out uh, trimming this frame, 3D printing something that will actually fit as a bracket, then installing the amp and everything else to get this head unit up and going. So in that video, I will have all my parts listed, where I got them, what's the model number, everything that you will need to know to build your own. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, Hack till it hurts.